Hello, this is Larry from Blue Collar Nation and Morning Tech Meeting, and we're happy to be here with you today for our Build Your Dream Team webinar. And we've got many people checking in right now, and while people are checking in, I just want to make sure everybody can hear us. Can everybody hear us okay? Okay. One guy says yes, yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. If you have any questions during the webinar, please don't hesitate to send in a question. We'll try and get to the questions at the end, but if there's something pertinent, I guess it's my judgment. I'm the king, I'm wearing the crown. You're, you're, the, you're the king? <laughs> okay. So good to, good to know up front. <laughs> but you know, okay, everybody's texting across through, they're laughing. Okay, I'm being silly, mm -hmm. that's cool. But just I wanna make sure we can communicate, we're on the same page, because I'm gonna be putting links through there as well at the same time later on, and I wanna make sure everybody can see them. So. I think everybody's here. We're running right on time. We want to be respectful with everybody's time. We're happy everybody's here and we will get started. So we want to explain to everybody um, what we're offering today. We know you're, things not, are, you're going to introduce me. Oh yes. I'm sorry. You, yeah. We got the tech whisperer here. What's up tech <laughs> whisperer. How are you buddy? It's feeling very left out. No, no, you're going to be running the whole show here, so it's all good. So Okay, I'll hang in the back then. You, you, you take it away. <laughs> I'm going to give the intro briefly, and then we'll hand over the reins to you, so you'll be all set. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the... Uh, I was feeling left out, Larry. No, don't feel left out. You're all good. So anyway, um, what we have, we're having a situation here in this world. We've got this crazy virus running around. I don't know what to call it. I call it a crazy virus because it's slowing everybody down. And we made this webinar based on what's going on. And your team is one of the most important parts of your company. And um, I expect this is going to help everybody out very much so. So why don't I hand it over to Eric and you can get started and you can explain what's going on. So the floor is yours, Mr. Sprague, the tech Thank whisperer. You. Appreciate it. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming out today, uh, taking your valuable time, especially with what's going on right now. And, you know, Larry and I had originally built out this webinar before all of this pandemic started. And what's, what we've realized is it's actually even more important now than when we made this thing a couple months ago. Um, you know, being close to your team and having a good culture are so much more important when the chips are down than, than when things are running smooth. So um, I think this is uh, pertinent information right now. So the title is Build Your Dream Team, Four Steps to Increase Profits, Sales, Referrals, and Happiness. And look, we, we all want that. Larry and I owned a cleaning and restoration business for 13 years. And, you know, of course you want profit, sales, and referrals. But the elusive thing a lot of times for many owners is happiness. You know, you, you start your business with a dream and then, you know, uh, it doesn't become that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So what we'd like to do first is kind of introduce just who we are and our experience. So you kind of get a sense for where we're coming from. Right. So first, let's interview, let, introduce Larry. Uh, Larry and I built a million dollar, multi-million dollar cleaning and restoration company. And. Larry was the marketing arm of that. And we used to call him the pineapple man because Larry is as good of a referral marketer as you will find. And his key was he used to del deliver pineapples to people with his business card tacked on. And uh, Larry's very good at building relationships and very good at creating a buzz and getting people to notice him. And, uh, and that really helped us sell our business and, uh, live our dream life. So that's that's Larry, and then uh, and there's me. You want to introduce me, Larry? Yeah, we I get the tech Really whispering. don't like talking about myself. No, no, you're all good. Um, Eric and I have been friends for a long time. We went to college together, which we'll get to. And um, together, we built a million dollar cleaning and restoration company, and M we multi million dollars, multi million dollar cleaning and restoration company. And in there, with the lessons and the way that we ran our company we're able to create different uh, entrepreneurs as well from the team. We had a couple of people that started their own business afterwards. Andy has his own fishing business. He sells lures for uh, fishing and deep sea. Yeah, big deal. And um, 
Leslie started her own business. She does financial advising with different people, and she's been very successful at that as well. And then Cole, another technician that we had, started his own cleaning business, air duct cleaning and carpet cleaning business, and he's been doing a wonderful job. And who else is there, Eric? Is there somebody else? You know, there, there's a few other guys. There's three or four other guys that have started businesses yeah. on the side too. And they're doing a real good job. And we're staying in touch with these guys and we're helping them with what's going on. So anyway, Eric did a really good job creating these guys. And then John, Eric is a John Maxwell certified coach, which we'll get into later, which you can see how that influenced many of the people in our company and our clients, current clients now, and hopefully you when we get done with this. And then we sold the business and uh, we're both living our dream life. Eric, especially, he's up in Utah. Granted, he's quarantined. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is it, I don't know if it's a dream right now, but in theory. In theory, it's a dream. And um, he's also author of an upcoming book. Actually, it's not upcoming. Everybody should have gotten it, The Blue Collar Leader. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. I didn't even know that was out. Yeah. And so um, you're in charge sent, of all those things. We you're sent that to everybody guy. before the podcast. So if everybody doesn't have it, please text me in there and I'll email it to you right now. Text me in the chat. Yeah. And you know, we'll look, it's a, it's a short book, but I think it, it will resonate with owner operators. I, yes. I think there's a, a lot of stuff in there that you guys can relate to. So. Yeah. So go ahead. No, yeah, it's cool. I and mean, we sold our business. Uh, that was probably, you know, that was the culmination of many, many years of struggle and hard work to build a company that somebody would actually want to buy. And you and I now have the time and latitude to do what we want in life. You know, you've been go you went to France, you went to the Caribbean on a cruise a couple of years ago. Yep. You and I go ride bikes a lot more than we ever were before. Yep. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, Larry, but I did not take a vacation the entire time we owned Shamrock, not one. Now you did the time that we sent you to Minnesota to get the Vortex. You and Yana got a couple of days to drive across country yourselves. and <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're driving across country in a carpet truck in a blizzard the whole way. <laughs> that, was, that was an awesome vacation. <laughs> but yeah, See, I didn't, a couple you know, days. Dude, you, you know, we, we worked all the time, you know, and I didn't really go anywhere. So I actually had the opportunity to... Uh, to go to St. Martin in the Dutch West Indies with my wife, Yana, who's in the picture. And if you look, Larry, behind that picture, 50 feet or so, there's that guy in the red shirt. That's Bruce Deloach, IICRC instructor. Yep, good guy. If good I'm not mistaken, Howard Partridge took this picture. Yep. And uh, we went with a group of, group, group from Howard's um, coaching group, and it, it was the time of our lives, so it was really great. So, you know, those are things, Those that was the – the frosting on the cake that you and I built all those years. So um, that's kind of where we're at now, but let's go backwards. So Larry mentioned that Larry and I were college roommates and we, uh, we were lifting partners. So in, in college, we basically majored in lifting and partying. Mm. Fraternizing, yeah, it's a blast, and uh, we had a good that's time. Who developed, that's who developed uh, our skills there. I mean, we totally learned the social skills, the organizational skills, how to put things together, yeah. And yeah. um, I had a blast, I do it all over again, obviously. And it was uh, it was part of the yeah. growth, part of the journey, just like starting this business. Well, and one of the reasons that you and I became business partners was because when we were lifting partners, you know, hungover, busy with school, whatever, we never missed a workout. Both of us had a very strong work ethic. And I actually went to my dad and said, hey, I'm thinking of partnering with Larry on a business. And, Larry, and my dad said, is Larry the guy who would like never miss a workout? No, he'd walk through the snowstorms. Walk to through the snow with you to the gym. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you guys will be fine. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, Larry and I, after college, both moved to California. I was in San Diego and Larry was um, up closer to Los Angeles. And I had a, a really good job. I had this job where, you know, I was getting paid really well. I was flying all over the world. Like from the outside, it looked amazing. But on the inside, I just want, I just had that itch to do my own thing. This is Larry's favorite saying. Michael Gerber says that people have an entrepreneurial seizure. And I'll read this real quick. <clears throat> yeah, this is from his book. Uh, E-Myth. Even, the, yep, the entrepreneurial seizure lies at the heart of most failures and judgment when someone decides to leave his or her job to go out on their own. The excitement of independence associated with getting rid of the boss is almost always fueled by a flawed understanding of what being on your own means. 
no words could be truer <laughs> than than what I brought you into. So my first yeah. sale, yeah. yeah, my first sale ever was you <laughs> and talking you into coming in, coming on board with me. So. Yep, and it worked. But I want to real quick preface here. Sure. It says failures of judgment in the top line. In yeah. the failures of judgment, we got passed quickly because we got coaching. Yeah, and most true. people that have the entrepreneurial seizure, which I say all the time, you start your own business, oh, cool, you got that entrepreneurial seizure because yeah. you don't always know what it's like to run your own business. But the failures in judgment can be eliminated so much more with coaching. We had Joe Polish, we had Howard Partridge, we had other coaches along the way that helped us get past those yeah. hurdles of owning a business. Yeah, so anyway. Very valuable. Very valuable. So what did I do? I scratched that itch. I left my high paying job and my million dollar home in San Diego with the, with the swimming pool. And I traded, talked Larry into working with me, traded it in and moved into a warehouse. <laughs> that was not the nicest place to live thinking that I'm going to live here for six months. Part of the journey. And I ended up being in that place for two and a half years. Now you're looking at that picture going, well, that doesn't look so bad, right? Well, we had a water heater that had a tank that was about this big and I'd get two minutes of hot water. So I had to decide whether am I going to wash my hair or am I going to wash my body? <laughs> because there certainly wasn't enough hot water to do both. And then also where we were in the Inland Empire of California, it's generally either really hot or really cold. It, it's, there's not much in, in the middle. It's a desert climate. And in that concrete tilt up building, you know, whatever it was outside, that's what it was in my room. So it was a hundred degrees all summer long. And then it would be like 35 to 45 in the winter at night. And, uh, you know, that was the price that we paid to get off the ground. Hey, you got to willing... tell them about, uh, the trucks in the morning. Uh, so yeah. we... Well, you tell a story. It's fine. So anyway, Eric would be sleeping in his cubicle inside of the shop. And the guys, we'd be out all night long cleaning carpet or water damage or janitorial, whatever we were doing at the time. And the guys would come in the morning and they'd fire up the truck around 7.30 to move it, get the day prepped and get going on. And Eric boom, would be woken up and the, uh, the fumes from the diesel trucks would go bellowing, not directly into his room because there was a wall, but it wasn't yeah, like but the that best was a wall. That was a loose wall. <laughs> yeah. So I get woken up with the, the roar of a diesel engine and then my room just filling with diesel fumes every yeah. single day because Larry and I would generally do the night jobs and then the guys would come in and do the day jobs. So, yeah. You know, hey, it's part of our journey, right? Exactly. And we yeah. were willing to make sacrifice. And, um, you know, when we started, you know, we were going gangbusters right when we began and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, a lot like, Today, the Inland Empire of California was one of the hardest hit areas in the whole country when the Great Recession hit. Yep, everything and slowed down totally. We'd, we had no background in business. We had no customer list. We had, you know, we were so new when it hit, we were on reaction mode because we could not get the phone to ring. And we'll talk about that a little bit more too. So what do we do? We went and did anything, you know, we were no longer just a carpet cleaning company and you know, everybody's using the word pivot. Now, Larry and I just used the word, let's find things we can do to get paid. <laughs> you know? Make it happen. Whatever and it make took. it happen. Yeah. So we saw a ton of foreclosures happening in our area. So we would go around to real estate companies and get trash out jobs. You can see Larry there dumping into a dumpster from a trashed out home. Yep, and that's and that, that, uh, if you see that jacuzzi, jacuzzi to the left, Larry, that was a disaster. I I basically you can tried see the to take line a, that you cut right in the middle of it. Actually, I uh, I tried to take a sawzall and cut it into like four pieces to take it out, but there was no way that was going to take all day. So you and I just had to manhandle that thing out of there. That was not easy. <laughs> so we'd do trash outs, which were not our favorite thing. And then, you know, we were cleaning mattresses and then we, then we took janitorial gigs at hair salons and every job would start at like 10 at night and go to like three in the morning. It was the worst. And we were doing that seven nights a week, 365 days a year. 
Yeah. So and, we'd be uh, doing two of them a night from what I can remember. And then we'd get up at seven yeah. o'clock in the morning the next, not get up, whatever. Yeah. I start mean, at seven o'clock in the morning at the shop the next day. You and I probably went almost two years, maybe only sleeping a couple hours a night. Yeah. You know? I remember, I, I've told you this before, Larry. I think, I think other than my two children being born and my wedding day, the greatest day of my life was the day that we gave that janitorial gig away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was pretty pretty watershed moment for me. So anyway, Larry and I were hell bent on survival. We were going to make it. So anytime that we didn't have work, we marketed. And you know, we didn't really know what we were doing, but we would just do. We did more. You know, the more, 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 more. We Larry would take one side of the street, I'd take the other, and we'd go knock on doors all day. We go to Anchor chamber meetings, people, making we'd go it to happen. Every single thing where people were going to be, we would go. We had Crocs. We never talked about the Crocs. We had these red Crocs in the beginning. Crocs were popular then, and Larry and I started wearing red Crocs because. We thought it would stand out. It actually did stand did, out. People yeah, still people talk still about talk that. about it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we marketed and marketed it. And then as the economy started to get better, we started to grow because we were laying that foundation with all this other work. And then we went from roughly 225000 to over a million in about nine months. Yeah. And that sounds so great when, when you say it. But Nope. It was, it was a disaster. Not <laughs> it was not great. We had major issues. We had a horrible culture because we, we were starting to have to hire people very quickly. And, you know, I had, I had run guys at the company that I worked at before, but it was the only job I had to do. The systems were all in place by the time I had come to that company. So, you know, having to do all the entrepreneurial stuff and, run the guys at the same time i wasn't prepared for that and larry hadn't had to do that either in his previous jobs they were usually more solo jobs so we had a horrible culture leadership obviously like i said wasn't there and the other thing was we didn't understand training we didn't under we, we thought training was go stand behind me watch me do this and then you'll somehow through osmosis be as good as me or or better <laughs> which never worked right no no and that was a big thing that we learned that was one of the yeah. biggest things that we fixed yeah. So then what, what did that lead to? Massive mistakes, costing lots of money. Larry and I putting out fires all day, every day. So basically the business is stop, stopping growing because now we're not out marketing and doing all the things that help us grow that quickly. Now we're just trying to make sure that people don't hate us and we didn't want our reputation to be hurt. So basically we'd go get all this work, but then we'd lose all the profit from that work running around making mistakes and putting out fires. And so. I think this is right as in the many people there. They sacrifice, they sacrifice to make things happen, which what we're doing. And you don't pick up your head from working in your business to working on your business. And in the e-myth, that was the biggest thing. And it took us forever to figure out how to do that, to get out and work on your business. And that's part well, of what you're doing. How many companies get stuck at 300,000, 500,000, 800,000, a million, or whatever their number is, and then they just never get any bigger than that. They're just at that, say, million-dollar mark for year after year after year. The, the reasons that they're stuck there is this list right here, generally speaking. You know, So and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But that, that's going to be the thing that keeps you from continuing to grow. Yep. And that was certainly true for us. So we realized we needed coaching. And Larry had mentioned Piranha Marketing before. Um, we went there because it was a car kind of the only carpet cleaning coaching that we had heard of. And, you know, the good news was <clears throat> they were really good at teaching you marketing. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And Larry and I used those still to this day, we use the stuff, but the problem for us was they weren't really focused on operations and leadership and training, which is what we needed. So it was like putting gasoline on a fire because now all of a sudden Larry and I are learning new marketing stuff. Larry's out doing that marketing stuff and now we're growing past that million mark, but we couldn't even handle the million mark. <laughs> so, it, you know, we, um, we, we met many good people there that we're still friends with today that helped us somewhat with this stuff, but we, we were getting to the point where, 
we couldn't handle the growth anymore, you know. So what we did was <clears throat> we Hang on a second. Howard. Go back to Richard Branson. We got to ask him, oh. tell him the big thing that we learned from him. Okay. They asked him in the audience, all these entrepreneurs. Well, hold on. So Larry and I were in this uh, contest to see how much you could grow your business. And, and we came in in the top five in the country. Yeah. And the prize was that we could spend an afternoon with about 20 people with Richard Branson and some other people like Bill Phillips at EAS and Muscle Media Magazine. and all. I mean, there are a lot of high level people there. But the highlight was Richard Branson. And uh, so we get to do some Q&A because it was such a small group with him. And people were asking some questions. And then one guy basically said, you know, Mr. Branson, what's the secret? What's the secret to business and success and entrepreneurship? And he took a long pause. And he looked up and he said, work out every day. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole place just kind of looked at each other like, what that is? does that mean? Yeah. That, what's that mean? You know, work out every day. But then, you know, as Larry and I went through our grow, growing through the rest of the coaching, we realized what good advice that was because his point was if, if you work out every day, you're healthier. So you're going to be more on your game. It's a stress reliever. So you're going to be able to handle the stress better. You're going to be happier. So you're going to be nicer to your people. You're going to be more creative. You're, you know, it, it's such a, in a way, a loaded answer because it's so simple, but it, it ticks so many boxes of success. Yeah. And you, you and I took it. that, as you can see in that picture, I was very yeah. overweight at that time because all I did was work and I wasn't in good health and I didn't feel good. And I made a big change after that to, to really work out. And so did you, I mean, you were better about it than I was, but you weren't doing like you're normal either. No, so. no, not at all. And then anyway. you saw the picture of us riding our bike earlier. The picture was there. Yeah. That's what we do all the time. Now that's our yeah. thing. Exactly. Riding our bike, taking yeah. care of our heads and yeah. it makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, go ahead. Richard Branson. So then we joined Howard's group because I just knew we needed more operational help. Howard was in our industry and I had kind of seen his stuff and, and saw that they talked about operations a lot. Operations, admin. Yeah. Selling. So I called the office and I, you know, I told them we had been through Piranha and all this stuff. And then they said, well, why don't you talk to Howard? So the next day I talked to Howard for about a half an hour on the phone. And I told him where we were at and what was going on, all the bad stuff, the good stuff too. And Howard immediately did said two things to me that just changed everything. Number one, he was like, I've been there. I know exactly what you're talking about. <clears throat> I've lived that. I know. And you know, right then, Larry, I wish you had been on the phone. I immediately felt better because it's like, I'm not the only idiot. <laughs> right? not the you only know? ones. That was huge. Just like we're trying to express to everybody right now. Yeah. You're not the only ones that have the only one. problems. And then, the better thing that he said after was, but because of that, I also have the answer how to fix it. And we were sold right then and there. You know, we probably didn't really have the profit <laughs> at the time to join his highest group, but we just did it. And we knew we needed to do it. And it was the best money that we, we yeah, ever invested in. By it. far the best money. And we're going to present to you things that are going to help you change your business as well. There is that me behind him. That is, I took the picture, I was running around, taking pictures of everybody. So really that was young. Joe Marketer. I look, I look really young. You do, because you mm. were. You had a haircut, and you were a little lighter. And <laughs> I took, Well, after Richard Branson, I started training like a madman. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, we joined Howard's group, and that was huge. Uh, through, Hel uh, through Howard, we, we met Ellen Rohr so that we could get our finances in order. She taught us how to look at our numbers realistically. We knew the P&L and we understood what all the things meant, the balance sheet and all of a sudden like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden lights are going on left and right and that was huge. Well, and also what to charge. Yes, exactly. Too. And people don't, we never, nobody ever teaches this stuff in schools, any school. No. And then after that, and I, for me, this was the game changer. I went and got John Maxwell certified. And, um, you know, I had played sports in high school, so I had some leadership experience and some leadership skill, but I wasn't really putting two to two together and putting them together at work with the team. 
And then when I got to Maxwell, the light bulb went off. Whatever, you know, whatever their system is, they just work for me. And I was like, okay, now I know what I need to do to go back and build that culture and build the training and all the things that you and I were going to need to be more successful, you know? So, I mean, Larry, did you see a big change when I came back from this? Yeah. You started um, teaching all our guys this great information and you scared the hell out of them. Yeah. Well, we'll which get, we'll into get that. to. <laughs> we'll get into that. So anyway, you know, when I first came back, I started trying to do the Maxwell stuff just straight up. And then I came up with this four step system that I think works really well for service businesses. Um, you know, it was trial and error at the beginning. So let, let's go through the four steps and I can kind of tell you what, what that looked like. Okay. So first thing, morning meeting, I was like, you know, when you're a team, you're going to have practice every day. And when you have practice every day as a kid on a football team or a basketball team, that's where you build your camaraderie and practice, not necessarily in the game. So I was like, we need something like that. We need something where we all get together and we get on the same page. And Larry fought me on that because he's more of a bean counter than I am. And it costs he's like, to have a lot of guys there every morning for 15 minutes. That adds up to a lot of money. You know, I think when I started this, we had 15, 20 guys at that point. And you're like 20 guys at X amount of dollars an hour for 15 minutes every month. And we were only going to do every Monday at the beginning. So I talked to you and I sold you twice. Now I sold you on this. So we started doing a Monday meeting and we saw some improvement. We saw upsells go up. We saw, the culture get better. People were a little happier. We saw breakages go down. We saw callbacks start to diminish. So we were seeing some good stuff. Hang on a second. Let me interrupt you real quick. Sure. So when you went to the John Maxwell and I said you scared the guys, tell them what happened from the John Maxwell information that got translated into the so message what, to the technicians. What happened was, you know, you, you get all these John Maxwell books about leadership and they're really great. But you got to think of like, who are your technicians and where did they come from? And, you know, so most of our technicians were, you know, guys that were 22, 21, 20, you know, they didn't like school that much. They didn't go to college. Um, they didn't, a lot of them didn't come from a great home life. Education wasn't pushed. Right. So, you know, I've got these guys that I want to mold and then I come in going right out of the book out of Maxwell, which is more written for executives and managers and white collar. And the guys freaked out. They just like couldn't handle it. Like they're, it just wasn't working for them because it was either going over their head or it was just too theoretical or whatever. So I had to back up. <clears throat> and then what I did was I was like, okay, I'll take the theory of every lesson but I'll put it in our language. I'll put it in our terms and talk about our jobs and what we do and how we service clients and all those things. And they didn't even know they were getting Maxwell training. Yeah, and that was <laughs> a transformation when it got turned into blue collar technician talk. Yeah. Yeah. Maxwell so, lessons. And that was so anyway, gigantic. Yeah. So uh, back to the morning meeting. So what, what it ended up is it started slowly and then we went to two days a week and things got a little better. And then I talked to you into going every day for 15 minutes and, you know, things started humming. All of a sudden Larry and I didn't have to be there every moment of every day because people were starting to, to grow and they were starting to do great work and they are starting to have that, you know, our company is called Shamrock. You can see it behind me there at the board. Yeah. You know, they started having that Shamrock culture of what we were all about. And we were just humming along. And then what happened was we got a bunch of really big commercial jobs. And in the water damage world, those are generally really slow to pay. And you and I had exhausted basically all, you know, reserve money. So you came to me and said, it's look, dude, until, you know, we're in a cash crunch until this is over, no more morning meeting. We cannot afford this. And, you know, reluctantly, I agreed with you. Um, well, I didn't agree with you, but I understood where you were coming from. So, you know, we just stopped doing the morning meeting <laughs> every day and started texting the guys where they were going to go and all this. And, you know, your point to me at the time was, dude, you've been doing this for like two years. They all, they know this stuff by the they back They know it. Hand. They're good. Yeah. 
And Larry, what happened? Mutiny. It was terrible. <laughs> the guys were so out of sorts. They're like, what's going on? Why are things changing? I don't understand. You know, well, and, and, the, and the crux of it was they felt like we weren't investing in them anymore. Yes, exactly. So immediately. Which all this on, is, is an investment in your guys. Immediately, add-on sales disappear. Breakages go up. Callbacks go up. Attitude and culture goes way down. And I turned around to you after like a week and a half, two weeks, and then said, dude, we're spending more money with all the problems than we are on the morning meeting. Yep. So that's so how we learned. That was what our we did learning is we, moment. We, we brought everybody in and we ate crow and we told them, you know, first why we did what we were doing, but then we were going to, you know, that we were going to go back to the morning meeting and that we would never not invest in them again. And you know what happened? Add-on sales came back, <laughs> breakages went down again, callbacks disappeared, yep. culture, culture got better, improved. and we never looked back after that. And that's when our company made the change to a company that could grow to the point where you and I didn't have to be in the business every single minute, and we could actually were creating a business that we could sell that somebody else would want to buy. And so much of that was just from that 15 minutes every morning. And the more we I called it our morning it, tech meeting, yeah, is what we called it. It was so valuable. Yep. So that's step one. Step two for us was building a community, and that went hand in hand with the morning tech meeting. So, you know, we started to really realize that the more of a family or team atmosphere that we could create, the the, the fewer turnover, we're, the less turnover we we're going to get, the more engagement we we're going to get. You know, people are going to be happier, which makes them do better work. So Larry had the idea. He came in from the field and Larry is always delivering pineapples and we were having barbecues and beers and all this stuff for our referral sources. And Larry came in one day and said, you know, I spend all this money, time and energy marketing to the referral sources, but our number one client is really our team. And then we came up with the idea where we started having barbecues for them. We started having parties. We started... I would hang out in the shop at, at the end of every day to make sure they feel loved when they came back in after a hard day. Uh, we'd take them out to dinner or lunch. You know, we just did the things and they weren't expensive. They were just taking some time to care and connect. And it went a long way, right? Yep. So that's, cool. number, that's step two, we built community. Step three, and this was a very important game changer, especially on my side, on the operations side we started holding in-house mastermind groups for technicians to, to become managers and field supervisors. So even if somebody we thought they might have the ability to move up the ranks, we would bring them in and do uh, John Maxwell's leadership gold book, which is my favorite book for service businesses. I just think it, it applies really well. And what we do is you can see, I got a bunch of guys there and we would do a half hour a week for 12 weeks. And then I would take all the lessons in leadership gold and put those lessons into a format that was specific for our blue collar service business, right? So I wasn't, you know, they all had information, but they weren't even really most of them reading the book. We were just doing the lessons and doing them in our language. And what would happen was, if we had that great technician that we wanted to move into a field supervisor, you know, just because you're a good tech doesn't mean you can run five guys. No, Those totally two different, totally skill different set. skill sets. Yeah. So we would go through these in-house mastermind groups. And by the end of the 12 weeks, the guy would might, you know, even before we were done, come to me and say, <clears throat> you know what? I don't want to be a field supervisor. I, this is not me. This doesn't fit my skill set. I'm really happy being a technician and that's a win-win for everybody because now you're not taking your best tech and putting he or she in a role that they really aren't cut out for and can't succeed in. Right. So, and then we had other people who we didn't really think would be good leaders or managers. So and after this, onto it. it was really cool. Yeah. They'd latch on and you'd be like, wow, that, that person, you know, is definitely going to be a good field supervisor and we'd move them into that role. So in-house masterminds, very powerful for us. And the last one, you know, dude, it took me way too long to get here. <laughs> and uh, yeah. if I have any regrets about Shamrock, I wish we had done the monthly quick review a lot earlier. Well, this is what, what we, 
interviewing people is always a dreaded time for a manager yeah. and owner to do. It's just like, oh, I got to go yeah. through this whole process. Yeah. But it's hugely valuable. Yeah. So we, like most other companies, would review once a year or not at all, <laughs> you, you know, in the early days. And, you know, what would happen prior to the yearly review, which is always done like the last week of December or whatever, you know, they might be doing a job that we didn't like for a very long time. And then it would all come out in the review for the year. And then there'd be a lot of hard feelings because the tech would be like, I, I had no idea you didn't want me to do it this way or that way or whatever. So finally, <laughs> I made a quick one page review system, which is just a, like a, a rating system with some like notes. And we started doing like five to 10 minute reviews every month for every single team member. And it changed our whole company because all of a sudden those guys can never let it, it never goes very long that we're dissatisfied with what they're doing. They know where they stand and they have only 30 days to fix it. Yep. So it's more fair for them and it's nicer for us. And, and what we did, it ended up not being like a, like a review, like a big review. Like once they get used to doing it every month, it was more just a time to hang out. And yeah, sometimes if things weren't going well, we'd have to, you know, say, look, you know, this needs to change, but we're having that communication every month. And, you know, here's a picture of Nick, who is one of our lead techs and Larry, we'd go, you know, meet them on a job and take them down the street to a subway or an ice cream place. And, you know, spend a few minutes with them, do the quick review. And then those guys would go right back to their job. And Larry and I would go right back to marketing yeah. or doing whatever we were doing. So it wasn't a time suck. It and was those guys, when we gave them that attention and invested those few minutes with them, made a big difference. They worked oh, so much harder. So yeah. if they were working, you know, a four hour a day, they were putting five or six hours worth of work in that because they were getting attention and they were getting feedback and they appreciated it. Well, and the other thing is too, is that when you're reviewing somebody every 30 days, like at the beginning, it might start out where you have, you know, kind of complaints about their work or their attitude or all that. But as you do it for long, you know, month on month, all of a sudden those, those things get fixed. And so basically every review turns into a very positive experience for, for the guys yep. because it's really our chance to tell them how much we appreciate them. And, you know, if there are problems, usually instead of getting upset with them, we would learn that they were having problems at home, they were having problems with a kid, and then we would help them with that as well. Yep. So very powerful stuff. So that's the four part system that completely changed our company and allowed us to basically sell. And the other point was, uh, I didn't really mention this, but, you know, you talked about riding bikes, you know, in the last few years, once I implemented this and got everybody going, I could come in the office, do a morning meeting, do, you know, some tasks for a couple hours. I could leave for like three or four hours and go ride my bike and take a swim. And then what I like to do is go back at the end of the day and be in the shop for all the guys when they're coming in so I could love on them and make sure, you know, and, you know, look, guys, have hard days, have they have hard clients, they have stuck in traffic in Los Angeles, you know, that would be their chance to tell me their frustrations and me yep. to show them that they cared. So all of a sudden, instead of working 15 hours a day, I'm working six. Yeah. And we can schedule things. We can schedule the, yeah. the, uh, feed, the, uh, the feedback with the guys, the reviews, we can schedule the workouts, we can schedule everything yeah. and it's much easier. Yeah, a lot less reactionary, which, yeah. you know, in blue collar service business can sometimes be hard. Totally. So how we can help you, you know, we, we want to be able to, to give back and to help. Larry and I run a business. So just like you, you know, we do sell things. So we're going to show you some of the things that we're offering. Um, but we really think that there's a lot of value in these things. So let's go through it. So one of the things happened was as the years went on and I would, you know, not, I wouldn't always be at the shop every single morning. So what I started to do was start shooting videos of the morning meeting and then either the team would just play it amongst themselves and then talk about it. Or if Larry was there, he'd kind of put it up on the big screen. And then I, I was doing the meeting every day so that we had that rhythm that it was the same every single day, but it didn't mean that I personally had to be administering that meeting 
every single day. Yep. So when we sold, Larry and I were kind of talking about what we wanted to do next. One of the first ideas was, you know, whether you're a plumber, electrician, contractor, pest control company, carpet cleaner, all the same rules apply. Because my lessons are personal development on Monday, in-home behavior on Tuesday, disc personality profiling on Wednesday, add on sales, sales training, whatever you want to call it on Thursday. And then on Friday, we do a recap with a quiz to make sure everybody was taking in that information. So basically the exact same system that we built Shamrock with is what you can now get in the video series. And, um, you know, we have many clients on it already and they love it. And Larry just came up with the ability to now use it on multi users. So like if you guys don't come to the shop every day, Which they predominantly them, don't with this virus going on. Right. You can send this video to their phone via yep. email. And, uh, and then, you know, it, it's not like I'm some guru guy or whatever who, you know, is a really great marketer and hasn't done this kind of work. I did this work for 20 plus years. Yeah. You know, the guys are getting the exact same stuff many times that you're saying, oh, that's but when they hear it from me, they don't know my bad habits. So they tend to listen. That's what we keep hearing from our clients. I don't know why it is, but when you tell them they do it and when I say it, they don't listen. But familiarity breeds contempt. So to have a, th a third party saying what you want to get across is very powerful. So anyway, that's five lessons every week, all year round. Okay. Uh, so Ashley here, I want to play a quick video. It's about a minute. Ashley came to us from another small business where the culture was very toxic. It was not good. We really wanted Ashley because she, we knew her from a chamber of commerce and knew that she could be a great team member. But she was very apprehensive to come work for us because she thought it was just going to be that all small service businesses treated their employees poorly, yada, yada. And hear what Ashley has to say after doing the uh, probably about a year's worth of morning meetings at this point. My name is Ashley Gonzalez and I actually work for Shamrock. I'm in the sales and marketing department. Uh, every morning Eric has his meetings and it's really helped me personally and um, at work. I'm actually happy to come to work. I, I enjoy my job and I enjoy the fact that Eric actually is involved and he's worried about me as a whole, not just the job that I'm doing. He knows that if I'm happy, at home, I'm gonna be happy at work and they actually care about us. And you don't find that very often in, in companies and especially companies that I've worked for, worked for before. Um, they've taught me how to be out of my comfort zone and right now I'm out of my comfort zone, but I'm doing this because I like my job, I enjoy it, I come to work every day and I do my best and I know that they actually care about me. So I would definitely recommend the lessons every morning because your employees actually, they feel that you care about them. And if they feel that you care about them, they're going to put more in effort into what they do every day. Yeah. So powerful, caring, powerful words from Ashley, uh, yep. especially for somebody who was so wary to really buy into a company because she had been kind of burned before. Uh, so now I have a quick sample video that this is a, you know, a, a sample of what your guys would get in the morning. This is a personal development video here. This is about six or seven minutes long. I'm going to play a, roughly a minute of it just to get some flavor. And then Larry, where could they go to see more samples if they needed to? Yeah, let me put it in the More chat here. It's in morningtechmeeting.com. And then you scroll down halfway and you can see the sample videos. Okay. Well, here we go. There's Chuck in a truck versus there. Paul the Pro. Hey guys, Eric with MorningTechMeeting.com. Today, I want to talk about two technicians. Chuck in a truck or Paul the Pro. And that's what we used to call it at our company. You know, when we'd look at competitors, we'd say, does that guy look like Chuck in a truck? So let's compare and contrast what Chuck in a truck versus Paul the Pro would look like out in the field, okay? First thing. Workday starts at 7 a.m. 
for a lot of us. Truck in a truck, he rolls in late every day. Every single day he's late. Every single day the boss is wondering if he's gonna even show. Every single day he's running in like we all don't know he's late already. We're trying to sneak in the back of the warehouse or whatever, right? Paul the Pro, 15 minutes early, having his cup of coffee, slowly easing his or her way into the day, okay? They're getting ready to work. I had a guy that's from the South that I used to work for and he'd say, that's when you're fixing to go to work. The fixing part is when you're preparing, okay? So be on time, be early. Early is on time. Chuck a truck rolls in hungover. He partied last night. He parties every night, every single night. Every single morning he comes in and his eyes are bloodshot and he's yawning and he feels horrible and he spends 30 minutes in the bathroom before he gets in his van to roll out because he's not feeling good. And that's his life. How good a job can you do in the field? serving your customers and just being a professional if that's how you behave. All right, so you guys get an idea and I bet everybody on this webinar has had Chuck and a truck work for their company. Probably had a lot of Chuck and trucks work for the oh, company. I know we have. It's a challenge, and, creates a toxic atmosphere. Well, what's cool is, is that when you start having these morning meetings, when you start building that culture, the other team members will no longer tolerate Chuck in a truck and they will be coming to you saying, Chuck needs to go. We need more Pauls. We need more Paul the pros. So uh, that's certainly what happened with us because once you've built the, that kind of culture where there's a lot of accountability, your team will not allow. Yeah. They start policing like the values of the company. Exactly. Yep. Which is very valuable. So let's talk about normal pricing for morningtechmeeting.com. Um, it's a, it's a subscription. You, you, uh, just pay with a credit card every month and, uh, there's different types. So we have a single user membership where if everybody does come to your office and you like use a big screen TV or, or a wall or whatever. So there'd only be one single subscription. That's 29 bucks a month, which, you know, that's a, that's a very low rate to get this much information. Now, if we have to send it out to a bunch of guys out in the field for two to five users, that's 39 a month. And if you have six to 15 users, that's 49 a month. And then if you have more than 15 guys, just give us a call and we'll give you a volume discount. We'll work something out depending on how many guys you have. Okay. So as you can see, very low fees for this amount of, of content. But you know, you guys are so nice to come on today. We know things are crazy in the world right now and we wanna to try to make it worth your while. So we, uh, I twisted Larry's arm. Twisted <laughs> it away. Counter. And uh, we came up with a morning tech meeting uh, webinar special. So one time offer, uh, whoever signs up after watching this today, uh, you can get $29 a month, which is the single user fee for any amount of users. So it doesn't matter if you have two guys or 200 guys, if you buy today, it's 29 bucks a month and we're gonna lock that rate in for life. Because at these low rates, we're not gonna be this low forever. And especially with this whole situation going on, we wanna make it worth your while. So um, I had to work on the locked in for life thing with Larry, by the way, just so you know. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm looking out for you Rates guys. might go up. I won't not for you. <laughs> not for you. Um, and then we have another thing as well. I talked about the in-home masterminds, in-house masterminds, I'm sorry. And those were super powerful, especially to bring guys up into management and supervisory roles, okay? You know, you can't just throw a technician into leading a whole bunch of guys and think it's going to go smoothly without a lot of training. So uh, Leadership Gold is a, a book that's 26 chapters. Uh, we'll cover 12 lessons uh, basically on a blackboard, just like morningtechmeeting.com. But it's all adapted specifically for cleaning and restoration companies, but also plumbers, electricians, you know, anybody who's doing field service work. Uh, you'll get a copy of a, a workbook that you can uh, print out or send to every guy so that they can work along with me on the blackboard drills. And as I said before, it's ideal for converting techs into managers and field supervisors. And, and to be honest, it's great for owners and managers anyway, because 
aside from this, I also teach this to real estate agents. I teach it to the insurance industry. Uh, I'm doing these, these Maxwell trainings to not just our world, but a, a broader spectrum of people. And it's amazing how they're taking office managers and, you know, making them better. And um, it's just, I can't say enough good stuff about having an in-house mastermind where it's on video. It, it's really, really powerful. And the feedback we get from people is wonderful. They enjoy it. It makes a yeah. big difference. And I love teaching it. You know, that's the other thing. I just love to do it. So anyway, normal price, like, you know, for the realtors and the insurance companies and all that, I charge $199 per person. And if you buy today, if you, if you don't, for some reason, want morning tech meeting, but you would like to have the in-house mastermind for leadership gold, it's just going to be 119 bucks. So that's basically 10 bucks a lesson. So that's pretty cheap to train your whole, your whole uh, team for 10 bucks per lesson. For 12 weeks but you know to make the deal sweeter if you bundle it with morning tech meeting today so if you buy both and do the bundle it's just 89 bucks so instead of 199 you're going to pay 89 so that's way lower i can't do that math in my head larry but it's probably like eight bucks a lesson or something along those lines no, it's now good. here's the thing that you need to know just because of the way we can do transactions what we'll do with the bundle rate is we'll amortize the Maxwell training of $89 over 12 months of your morning tech meeting uh, subscription. So for the first year, it would be $36 a month instead of the 29. So you're yeah. just paying seven extra bucks a month. So, um, you know, if anybody has any questions and they don't understand this, just go, you know, in the chat, hit Larry up. Or email us and we'll, Larry, we'll, Larry, can you put our email in the notes so that people, if they have questions, yeah. can hit us up. I'll do that right now. Cool. And then anybody that buys, we want to give some bonuses away because we want to feel like if you spend money with us that we, we want to give you more than we feel. We want to give you more, you know, no matter what. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first thing is that quick review sheet that we were talking about with the monthly reviews, look, it took me many months and many iterations of that to get it right. Um, I'll send that, we'll send that out to you for free so you can use it as much as you want with your guys. That's bonus number one. Uh, bonus number two, Larry and I also have a podcast called the Blue Collar Nation Podcast, which you can find on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. But we also did a thing called Blue Collar Titans, which is not up on iTunes. And what it was is we got a lot of experts in the blue collar world. Howard Partridge, Chuck Violand, Ellen Rohr, Joe Kowalski, John Braun, Ed Cross, the restoration lawyer, uh, Derek and Katie from Spot on Solutions, Al Levy, Seven Power Contractor, Tom Ziegler, Nisa Coy, Bruce Legend, and actually a whole bunch of other guys from like heating and air conditioning and plumbing. Basically what it is, it's 20 podcasts that are roughly an hour each. And it's all aspects of owning a blue collar business. So basically Titans is like a master class for owning a blue collar service business. And uh, we'll send that to you for totally for free as well. And then if somebody doesn't have the ebook and, and would like it, uh, we'll throw that in as well. Larry can send that out to you. So. Yeah, that's been sent out to everybody already. So if you okay. did not get it, please awesome. let me know. Okay. So really that's it. You know, we're trying to add value. We know right now that things are tough and people are kind of holding on to their money a little bit, but I can't stress enough that our current situation makes team even more important right now than it ever has been. You know, we are going to come out of this. Things are going to get better. I hope you're busy, but if you're not, Look, when, when people start to go do business again, you need your team when it's go time. So the best way to keep them is to make sure you're doing things with them now. And, uh, you know, the videos allow you to stay in touch with them every day. It gives you a talking point with your team. It shows that you care, that you're invest Even when times are tough, you're making a small investment in them every single day. They will appreciate that. Um, you know, and when things are not 100%, what do you do? You should be training your team and making your business better, you know? Um, and then, you know, it's all about doubling down. It's doubling down on your marketing. It's doubling it down on your training. It's doubling it down on your team. You know, when things are going like they're going, 
that's probably the way to go. And the work comes back because you're having problems now. The work comes back. You're going to need a team to do the work. A a motivated, happy, confident, good team for yourself. So, So let me finish, Larry, with three questions for everybody. Okay. I just want to put this in, in context. So would everybody on here agree that this training would help your team? I, I would like to think that everybody would agree. Okay. I have spent years figuring out these lessons and, and shooting videos and, and just coming up with this content and studying and reading. You know, this is a lot of work to make these morning tech meetings work, you know, and you know, my question to you would be, are you willing to put in all the work that I did over the years and the time and the money to make this from scratch yourself? Don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. You know, I mean, by the time we had done it, I was already kind of non-operational in our business. We had people doing that. So I actually had time to act. You know, one of my biggest and most important jobs at Shamrock was training. You know, I was more like the CEO of training, not operations anymore. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to do it yourself, by all means, I just don't know at the price point with which we're selling at if that's a good decision for you or not. And then would it not be better to team up with Larry and I and get everything at a low monthly price? I mean, if you buy the bundle, it's 36 bucks a month for the first year and then it goes to 29. And uh, yeah, I just, I think that's a lot of training and a, a lot of good info for a very, very low price. So I, I hope you guys, I'm not trying to do a hard sell, but I do hope that you at least consider coming and joining us because Larry and I are trying to create a movement. This is way more than just us, you know, selling some videos. To us, this is making owners' lives better and happier. Yeah, this is how we figured out many different ways as we're explaining here to make things dramatically better for you. These lot of little things, you know, the 15 minutes every morning changes a lot of things. And these Maxwell lessons will change many, many things. So we'll have some Q and A time. Uh, you guys can chat in whatever questions you have for Larry. And uh, if you don't want to do it in pub in a public forum, that's cool. You can always send us an email. Larry will put that in on the notes. Do you have the uh, pricing page, morningtechmeeting.com webinar? There we go. Okay, right great. here. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> so <clears throat> basically here, it, it's just reiterating what we're saying. <clears throat> and uh, if you go to www.morningtechmeeting.com backslash webinar MTM, this page will come up. And then you can just click on one of those buttons to choose which one you'd like to buy. Okay. Great. So, that's the end for me, Larry. My voice is about done. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Now we have a bunch of questions coming up here. And I texted this web address. You can just click on it in the uh, chat. And uh, we have some questions. One person wanted to explain how often the morning tech meeting comes. And we send it out every morning. It's an email form to you. And you get an email and you click on it. And the lesson will come up. Um, after you click, it'll go to a video on a web page, and you can watch it from there. And then we'll also email it out to your guys now that everybody's not necessarily in the office together. And that is the system we have. Generally speaking, you want to have a conversation afterwards with everybody that will relate to the lessons, like the chuck and a chuck poll on the pro that we did earlier. You'll want to talk about who's doing the chuck and chuck behavior, who's doing the poll on a pro behavior. Even a point it out, but there's going to be a conversation. Well, but you know, just I mean, when, when I used to do Chuck in a truck versus Paul the Pro, our guys would want to talk about competitors that were Chuck in a truck. And then we'd have a conversation about, okay, what are all the things that we can do to make sure that we're not viewed like our competitor who we see as Chuck in a truck? Yep. You know, and that way they're giving the ideas because they're saying, I don't want to be Chuck in a truck. And the guy who doesn't care if he's chucking a truck or not usually gets kind of run out of Dodge once everybody else yeah. wants to be Paul the Pro. Yeah, he gets policed out, and that's yeah. how it goes. Okay, another one had a question. How'd you come up with the Tech Whispering name? <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember. Do you remember? I, I remember, yeah. So, Larry, who doesn't speak technician very well, 
<laughs> to say say that mildly. You know, he would I come in so hard. He would come in and go to the whiteboard and try to explain a job to the guys, you know, that that he had been to and say sold. And he would sit there and, you know, do these elaborate drawings and the whole thing. And I'd kind of sit back and just be shaking my head like, oh my gosh, these guys are gonna have no idea what to do. And they'd all kind of sit there blankly and out of you know deference to Larry, they wouldn't say like, I don't understand. And then Larry would finally realize that they didn't understand. We're grasping it at all. And I was so like, he'd kind of turn around and I'd be standing like six, eight feet away and he'd say, Could you explain this to them? And I'd oh, walk I'd up to the board. I'd be mad and frustrated and I'd walk my up mind. to the Just board. Just tell them what's supposed to do. I'd walk up to the board and say, You do this, this, and this, and you do that, 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 and that, and you could drive here and we go there, and you guys good? And they all look at me and go, Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, I forgot. I so so what happened was is they started calling me the tech whisperer, not you. Yeah. And uh, then you started when you'd go out and around, be talking about, about me as the tech whisperer. And then what was happening was, you know, friends we had that were plumbers and contractors, with, and, you know, Bateman companies, they start asking if I could come over and train their guys. Yeah. Which we did with a couple of our associates. That was we did very that good. Sometimes, yeah. It was a good marketing thing that we had. At the time. So that's, and then the guys kind of would call me the tech whisperer all the time. Yeah. It became so, a funny thing. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the, Larry, the reality is, is that at heart, I'm a technician who learned how to be an entrepreneur not the other way around. Yeah. You know, well, and, and I think the guys relate to that and they feel, and they feel it because they know I'm one of them really down deep. Yep. And it's obviously comes through the lesson. So hang on. When we have one more question here, they're okay. asking about disc. What is disc? Okay. Disc, disc personality training was a huge game changer for us. Our Basically, lives and the business, told yeah. in our lives as well. Yeah, and our team. So, DISC is, you know, it's been around since like the 1930s. And many companies, even really big ones, will run their entire operation kind of from a DISC perspective. And what DISC is, is you take a test and then it gives you your profile, your strengths, your weaknesses, your likes, your dislikes, your behaviors all of these things that really show how you tick. And what's cool is unlike some other personality profiling, which has like 16 boxes or 30 boxes, there's only four. So it's easy to kind of get your head around it. And then how I use it is, you know, the first thing to do is get people, I always say this happens in three phases. So the first phase is to finally, to, as we go through the lessons, to see yourself as who you really are in how you behave yeah. to actually notice, Oh, I'm a D or I'm an S or I'm a C or I'm, and then you say, okay. That self-awareness was the, one self of the hugest thing. But then the second phase is then owning what your strengths and weaknesses are and being able to be vulnerable and say, you know what guys, you know, I'm not good at this because of the way my disc profile is. So that takes a lot of the personal stuff out of it. And then the last phase, which is really a lifetime journey, is being able to see somebody, quickly figure out what their disc profile is, and then I call it visiting them in their box, going to the communication style that they feel comfortable with and communicating with them in that way. And I cannot tell you how, you know, crucial that is for team getting along, uh, you know, doing add-on sales, uh, you know, dealing with an upset customer. So no, valuable. I mean, it, it's huge. Yep. So, I mean, I could go on for two hours just with stories about how DISC, you know, helped our company. But and people don't important. know what DISC is, but once you get into it, yeah. it totally takes over everything in your yeah. perspective of all yeah, the you, other people. You, you could go with. online anywhere and just type in free DISC test on your phone and go take a disc test, you know, yeah, and then a few but, minutes. And my thing is, is that I take disc and then what I do is much like the Maxwell thing, I put it into our blue collar service business terms so that it's very applicable to the guy's jobs. Yep. Absolutely. So. All right. We don't have any other questions. Everybody's good. I typed in a couple of questions to answer. So we are out. If you have any questions, email us. You can email eric at morningtickmeeting.com 
We'll get back to you and we are out. You guys have a great day. Thanks for joining us. It was very Thank cool you. to have you with us. See Appreciate you. it. Appreciate your time.